All right, let's talk about the Trump immigration plans from both a uh, free market and laissez-faire classical liberal perspective uh, and really look at uh, what's good and bad about the plan. Now, some aspects of it are great. No-brainer, they protect private property rights. Some aspects of it essentially expand federal police powers, and that's that's not such a good thing. Let's look at the different pieces of it, though. As, uh, the good part, obviously cutting out welfare dollars from all of this stuff. In recent decades, the U.S. immigration system has become essentially a government-subsidized scheme, right? You show up, you get free money, uh, you get access to schools, uh, all sorts of free stuff gets thrown at migrants. And even those who go through the legal system, after only five years, they get access to a wide variety of welfare programs. And then, of course, they get, also get access to citizenship, uh, or it can at least begin the, the process after five years. Now, what we've also got are is the problem of these brand new immigrants showing up and they, they get money thrown at them. Uh, we're seeing this now, of course, in places like New York, but it's a wide variety of cities across the U.S. And they're, they're getting a debit card with thousands of dollars on it. They're getting free housing, sometimes in luxury hotels. They're getting free food. And a lot of Americans uh, saw that that was a problem. And that, that's why they voted for Trump in many cases. So there is no downside to cutting all that off. Get rid of it end this this scheme of subsidizing migration. There, of course, isn't anything wrong with true private sector migration. This is where someone gets invited, offers a job to these people, and where the private sector supports these people, and these people have to be productive in return. Totally different situation from what we're facing now. And obviously, to cut all that out would not endanger private property in any way. All it means now is that people need to support themselves, and the people who can, they get to hold their property, they get to contract for work, they get to rent an apartment or, a, or buy a house, any of that stuff, uh, that's, that would not be endangered by getting rid of any sort of welfare, nor would it be endangered by changing citizenship situations, right? Citizenship is not a, a property right. There is no natural right to citizenship in any particular place, uh, except for the tiny number of people who would be rendered truly stateless where they denied U.S. citizenship, uh, no, none of these people arriving would be stateless uh, without being granted U.S. citizenship. They already have citizenship in the countries that they showed up from. And by the way, when a lot of them get citizenship in the U.S., they don't renounce their old citizenship. They now have dual citizenship, showing that, yeah, they were never at risk of being stateless. But by not having citizenship, these people aren't forfeiting any property rights, right? We should expand the time horizon for citizenship out to at least— uh, 10 years, maybe 20 years, this this requires that a person be far more invested in the local community, uh, to contribute a lot more to the local economy before they can start to extract resources in the form of these social benefits programs. And that doesn't endanger anyone's property rights. You don't have to be a citizen to acquire property, to keep it, to uh, uh, have legal contracts with others, all that sort of stuff. It's just simply irrelevant to the issue of property rights. So we could do all of that stuff, and this would be perfectly laissez-faire, be respectful of people's uh, actual true natural rights. Now, there is stuff on the other side that's not looking so good. These are some of these issues like, say, uh, <laughs> mass deportation, where how do you accomplish mass deportation? Well, uh, it, you, we don't have magical abilities, right? Border Patrol agents don't have uh, special incantations that they can say and then magically see who who is a legal immigrant who's an illegal immigrant how do you determine this you have to conduct investigations how do you conduct investigations well you ask people what their citizenship status is you investigate them you spy on them essentially you uh, you observe them uh, and you in many cases demand that they provide proof of citizenship you're asking people for their papers now I know we're going to be told by many conservatives, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, you have nothing to fear. Yes, we know this is what these people told us uh, in regards to the Patriot Act and NSA spying and the war on terror in general, those vast expansions in the surveillance state that a lot of conservatives supported and said, hey, it's no big problem because the government would never abuse their power. We, of course, know that they always do. So 
any sort of scheme to go out and start investigating people more closely to figure out what their citizenship status is, I regard that as rather problematic. Now, of course, some people will volunteer themselves for deportation. Who are these people? They're criminals in many cases, right? These are people picked up and arrested for engaging in real crime, for violence against other people, uh, for thievery, for fraud, that sort of thing. And yeah. Sure, that's an easy case, right? You deport those people. They're already in the system. You already figured out that they're not, uh, <laughs> they don't have any legal status. And of course, on top of that, they're, they're bloodsuckers upon society because they're victimizing uh, peaceful people who are already here. So sure, get rid of them. Also, people who uh, maybe apply, once we've established that there's no federal money or no government money should be going to any sort of social benefits for migrants, people who apply for social benefits as migrants. They're essentially uh, engaging in fraud. Yep, you, those people can be deported. Uh, of course, you could say the same thing maybe about non-citizens who attempt to vote, all ripe for deportation. However, once we start talking about uh, investigating everybody, that's an entirely different situation. And then we end up with this stuff where, since World War II, the U.S. created this whole new idea of the uh, the border zone. It's no longer just the border, right? To have a border with a wall and people are coming through and you're trying to check to see if they're uh, felons, that sort of thing. That's one thing that virtually nobody has a problem with. On the other hand, since World War II, this is a totally new invention of the federal government, obviously unconstitutional. It's a 20th century thing. Uh, they had created this 25-mile border zone where Border Patrol agents can just wander around asking people to, to prove their citizenship, that sort of thing. Now, that was unilaterally extended without approval from Congress up to 100 miles in more recent decades. So, and you've seen videos with this sort of thing on YouTube and such where people are just driving through the American Southwest and they're being stopped and asked about their citizenship. Uh, this is, <laughs> I, you know, I'm against this sort of thing where somebody minding his own business is now suddenly being asked uh, questions by government agents. So that presents some real problems if you're going to try and convince people who are genuinely committed to freedom and free markets that, hey, we're just going to start asking everybody for their papers now. This should not be confused with uh, efforts to limit immigration by cutting people off from federal money, uh, by deporting criminals, that sort of thing. And uh, this perhaps could be this idea of going around and asking everybody to justify their existence as uh, citizens with paperwork. This perhaps then could be uh, categorized along with some of this other stuff, such as, oh, we're going to punish private citizens for attempting to, say, rent an apartment to a, an, another person who doesn't have the, the correct government paperwork, or maybe someone who's paying someone to mow their lawn and they don't have the correct government paperwork. Uh, all of that sort of stuff really is an expansion of federal power, and that is to be contrasted with other stuff, such as cutting out welfare dollars or uh, changing the citizenship situation. In many cases, that actually limits federal power. So these are two very different things and should not be confused. And uh, so we shouldn't take all uh, the Trump plan as just one monolithic thing that's all good or all bad. We need to start looking at the individual policies within there and uh, then come up with our, our own ideas about what's good and bad.